Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are gonna be making some treats and some cakes for my niece's first birthday party. So we're gonna start off by making some dipped Oreo cookies. I got some Mega Stuff Oreos, some candy wafers, some vanilla almond bark, and got some food coloring as well. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is sticking some of these melting wafers inside the Oreos, spaced out enough so that they look like little Mickey ears. And we're going to do this to pretty much all of the Oreos in the package. And then what I was going to do was melt the remaining chocolate wafers. They were the color black. And I was going to dip the top half of like the ears and the cookie into the melted chocolate but unfortunately i didn't read the package correctly and i think i ended up overheating the chocolate which made it like a very firm chalky consistency and essentially it made it unusable for my little cookies so i will get to what i did in a second to solve that problem but for the bottom half of the cookies i melted down my almond bark i just get the great value brand and I added some pink food coloring and dipped the bottom half of our cookies, like I said, in this mixture. And we're going to let it firm up. I used parchment paper on the bottom just so that it would be really easy to remove these cookies. But for the top part, like I said, I kind of, you know, ruined my black melting chocolate. So what I ended up doing was making like a pseudo dipping chocolate with semi-sweet chocolate chips I did some heavy whipping cream in there and I just tried to make the ratio like more chocolate chips than heavy whipping cream because I did want this to solidify and it made it like a fudgy consistency and it ended up working out fine. It didn't really matter that these were a dark brown versus a black. After those dried, I took some of the almond bark and melted it down, keeping it the white color, and just piped a little border between the two colors on my cookies, and then put little polka dots on the pink sides as well. This was kind of the theme that my sister-in-law communicated with me, so I just wanted to make an additional little treat, and these were so delicious. I could definitely see doing this again. Next, we are going to be making the cake for my niece. I really wanted to experiment with a new flavor and I had tried this before, but I wanted to make it for you guys so you can kind of see what it looks like. And it is definitely a flavor combination that I will keep on my little cake resume. <laughs> but essentially, I am just making my standard vanilla cake, which I've made plenty of times on this channel, and I'm adding an entire lemon. So I'm adding the zest of the lemon with half of the sugar and what I have to do is like put the zest in there and just kind of like run it through my fingers to get the oils to come out. And then later on I added in the juice of a lemon before I folded in my egg whites which you guys will you know see the batter kind of come together. One batch made about three fairly thick six inch cake layers. So this is a smaller cake than I normally make and that was kind of another little thing that didn't go as planned. Now typically I like to do like a five or six layer cake for birthday parties and I realized that I didn't buy enough lemons because I had two lemons. I wanted to use one for the cake and then one for the cream cheese frosting. I wanted to make it a lemon cream cheese frosting. So as I was, you know, making the cake batter and realizing, wow, this is just going to be three layers, I was a little, you know, frustrated because I had kind of waited till the last minute to get this cake made. 
And I figured, you know, I can go ahead and make this three layer cake. And then I tried something else with my tres leches cake recipe. I wanted to see if I could stack that. And originally my sister-in-law did ask if I could make a tres leches cake and I just wasn't sure if I could stack it. So I figured I can at least make this three layer cake and then I can experiment with the tres leches cake. If it doesn't look pretty, you know, it's kind of a backup cake anyways. And I'll show you guys how that ended up turning out at the end I didn't film it because like I said whenever it's like a I'm trying something new and it could be a total failure I don't really try to like you know show that in a video I want to perfect something so I could share my tips and tricks rather than just like here's an experience that you know possibly fails but lucky for me it was a success but anyways, back to this cake. So I had my lemon cake layers. And then for the frosting, I made a cream cheese frosting and added the juice of that lemon as well as the full zest of it as well. And it, you know, creates a very delicious lemony sweet frosting. And then as I layered the cakes, I added in some seedless raspberry jam. And this combination of raspberry and lemon is just so delicious. I was originally inspired with this flavor combination when we visited my brother-in-law on the East Coast when we did that whole trip. I have a little video series highlighting that trip, but we had some cupcakes from a little bakery and that was the flavor combo and I just loved it. And so I knew I wanted to master like replicating that flavor combo and I think I nailed it. So here are some clips from the actual birthday party. My sister-in-law did such a great job with her decorating. She actually just recently got a Cricut and so she made like all the little cutouts. She made the cake topper and we just ended up sticking on a little cookie that I made on top of the cake to go with the theme and I think it just really all tied together nicely. My brother actually cut out a bunch of these like wood pieces so I was really impressed with that. And my little niece Queen Quinn seemed to really like the cake. Is that yummy, Quinny? Oh yeah, okay. 
<laughs> so in just a little bit i will show you guys what the cakes looked like when we sliced into them like i mentioned before i was really excited that i was able to successfully stack a tress lettuce cake for those of you who are not familiar with the tress lettuce cake it's like a cake soaked with different types of milks so it can be kind of runny and my fear was that you know, it would start to like seep out the bottom and leak essentially. But my trick to avoid this was just to keep the cake once it was fully decorated like in the freezer and then we took it out of the freezer and drove to my brother's house and stuck the cake in the fridge until it was ready to serve and it ended up working out great. But anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you are new and I'll catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.